Hey everyone, welcome to Charles Group Engineering. I'm Ahmed and in this video I'm going to teach you how to do some 2D sketching in KTA V5. Um, for this video I have this drawing that I've already made and I'm going to show you in step by step how you can make this yourself as well. This is kind of a complicated uh, sketch but after I've trained you, you will be able to make this on your own as well. So before we proceed with the video, I would highly appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel, which is going to help support this channel and drop a like if you like this video and you can leave a comment as well if you have any questions and you can also follow me on Instagram at Charles Kappa. So uh, with that out of the way, we're going to jump right into it. So I'm going to close this one and I'm not going to save it. Because obviously, I'm going to maybe making it again. And this is the drawing that we are going to make. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna take it out the way. obviously we're going to start off with and we're going to select any plane of reference that we want to draw, uh, draw our sketch in. So it's the XY plane and we're going to press this sketch tool to enter the sketcher uh, mode. Now, what we have here is the first thing that you notice here is this construction circle. So what do I mean by construction circle? It means that any circle or any um, um, element of a drawing that is only used to aid the drawing and is not used is not considered a part an actual element of a, of a sketch. Yeah, I think I've explained that badly, but like essentially, a geometric element is not included in the actual element. It's only a, there to aid you in the drawing of the actual element. So the first thing you notice is this one and the next thing you notice is like I mentioned in the previous video I always look for elements that are symmetrical about a certain axis so in this case you see here that this whole uh, sketch is symmetrical about this vertical axis so if you see here if if you see here this part is mirrored about the central vertical axis on this side so we can use make use of this property and we can make one half of it and we can duplicate the rest half of it on the other side so we don't have to you know do double the work so we can be more efficient in our drawing so we're gonna start off with drawing the construction circle first and then we can draw draw the rest of the figure so to draw the construction circle we're gonna uh, oh first of all I'm gonna draw an axis so it's gonna be this one vertical axis so I use this axis tool here and then I'm gonna take uh, select the circle tool and I'm gonna press this command here which means it says construction standard construction step slash standard element so I'm gonna to toggle it on as construction element and I'm gonna make a construction circle right around here and on this part so that one of its edges touches the origin so if you see here if when I selected construction it doesn't give me a smooth line uh, which is a standard element however it gives me a dashed line which indicates that it's a construction element it won't be treated as an actual sketch a standard sketch element. and now I'm gonna uh, dimension it and it's the radius is 128 uh, di diameter, 128 units in diameter. So I'm going to change that to diameter 28. Okay. There we have it. I'm going to center this here. Okay, so the next thing we need is the next thing you notice here is the circle. So we're going to go step by step. We're going to start from the top and you know, move uh, down from there. So the next thing is, are these two concentric circles here. So I'm going to make them. So one of those circles has a radius of 30 and the inner circle has a, radius, a diameter of 36. So I'm going to make these circles here in the center. Yep. If you notice here, I'm drawing a um, construction element, but we don't need that. We need a standard element this time. So I'm going to toggle this off. Yep. And if you notice here, it's a smooth line now, which indicates that it's a standard element. Now for the inner circle, it's this one. Now, so I'm gonna 
dimension them so the outer circle has a radius of 30 radius of 30 and the inner circle has a diameter of 36 Okay. So the next thing you notice here is this curve. So from my previous video, I showed you how you can um, make something curvy like this. Um, so what we're going to use is we're going to use parts of circles called arcs and we're going to transition them smoothly to one another uh, like my previous video. So we're going to start doing that here. But first, I'm going to make this, cir this circle as a reference point. And if you notice here, the center of the circle and the angle between the center of the circle and this vertical axis is 30 degrees. So I'm going to make another axis here, which passes through this center point and this central circle. And it's going to have 30 degree angle between the vertical axis. So I'm going to choose the axis again. And I'm going to start from here. And you can give it any length you want. And I'm going to choose the constraint toolbar tool. And I'm going to choose these two uh, sides for a for uh, angle. And I'm going to choose three degrees. Now, so now we need to draw a circle at the point whose center is at the intersection point between this axis and this construction circle. So in order to get that point, the intersecting point, I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose this intersection point. So I'm going to create, I have, I'm going to create a point, which is the point at the intersection between two elements. So in this case, it's going to be this construction circle and this axis. So I've chose, I'm going to choose that and I'm going to select this axis and this construction circle. I'm just going to create a circle here, uh, a point here, as you can see. I'm going to try to zoom in so that you can, sh I think you can see better. Yeah. So I'm going to, so since this point is only for construction purposes and it won't be considered as a, an actual standard element. So I'm going to make it as a construction element. So in, so if it's a, if a point is in its standard form, it's uh, denoted as plus, and if it's in construction, it's a dot, a point. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna create a circle center at this point. So when this blue dot turns solid uh, circle, it means that they are coincident. It means coincident property, which means that this circle, center of the circle is at Exact is coincident on the point that we just created. So I'm going to make that. It's a construction element again. I'm going to toggle that off. Okay. So this um, the radius of the circle is 10 units. 10. Oops. It has to be radius. So we got this circle now and we have to create this arc as well. So to create an arc, what we are essentially going to create is a circle first and then we're going to trim out the rest of it. So yeah. And this circle is going to have a tangential property with both these circles. So we got tangent here and we're going to make these two tangent as well. So I'm going to select this and these two circles and I'm going to make them tangent. Yep. Okay, so we got this part. So what we've done is we've essentially created this part. Now we have to make this as well. So I'm gonna make this circle here first, the arc essentially, and I'm gonna join it from here, from this circle. So I'm gonna choose circle, make a circle here. Okay, I'll just delete and make a new one. So I got that right here. Yeah. And the radius of this is 12. Okay. 
So now we have to join this circle to this one. Over here. So if you see here, we're only getting circles, a lot of circles, but we're gonna trim some part of circles that we don't need because obviously all of this is all curvy and all of these curves denote parts of circles of different radii or different radiuses, that's the word. So yeah, so we're gonna use a circle here as well. With the radius of 54. Uh, with tangential property with both of these circles. So we got tangential tangent here. We're gonna have a tangential property here as well. I'm gonna select both of them and I'm gonna go here and select tangential property. And the radius of the circle is 54. There you go. So now you, we have circles here all over the place. So what we're gonna use is our good old quick trim. I'm gonna double click it here and I'm gonna trim parts of the circles that we don't need. So I've trimmed this part because obviously we're gonna um, duply uh, mirror this, this side on, on the right side as well. So if we have that, it's gonna be duplicated like over again. So it's gonna have like two parts here. So I'm gonna take that out as well. So, um, okay. So we have, um, okay, so we got this bit. So I'm gonna keep this part there, but I'm gonna trim this part here. Like this. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we have this part that has to be taken out because obviously it's not going all the way here. So I'm gonna take that out. Yep, that's gone. Now this sketch is going from here to here, and I will have to take that side out. Take that. Now it's going from here to here, so we don't need this side, and that as well. Yep. And now it's going from here all the way to here. So we don't need this big chunk of the circle. Yeah, and we can get it like that as well. No, yeah. So if you notice here, we have almost the same thing uh, that we had in the sketch. Oops, sorry. Let's see, I have to deselect that. And deselect that. And So if you notice here, we have our sketch almost ready here. We still got some of elements, some of the elements left. For example, this circle and this one. It has, I can see it clearly, but I believe it's five radius. So we got four holes with five radius. So one, two, three, four. All of them have five units in radius. I'm gonna make those holes now. So I'm gonna make that one. Make it five. So I will create this hole after I've mirrored this side because obviously we only got one hole. We don't want it mirrored again and again. Um, yeah. So I think everything's set now for symmetry property. Now we're gonna. I'm gonna select all of this, all of our sketch, and I'm gonna use a good old mirror pro mirror toolbar, and I'm gonna select the axis. Uh, along which it has to be symmetrified or it has to be mirrored. Um, like this. Wait. Okay. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna select it again. This one, obviously, the, the axis that we made at the start of the video, just like that, and voila, it has created a nice looking shape. It does look a bit odd compared to this one. That's because we didn't, we hadn't, we haven't uh, dimensioned it vertically in this direction. So from the center of this circle and to the center of this small circle at uh, the bottom. So yeah, I'm gonna use 
put in that dimension as well. So I'm going to use the constraint toolbar. Select this, select this, and I'm going to make it 125. Use both of them, make them tangential. Yep. Okay, and the radius. So one more thing is, that is left here is the circle. So the circle and that one. So the dimension is four or five units in radius. And then we have the final circles over here. It's five units in radius. Okay. So that's essentially how you make something like this. I know it's a bit complicated because it has a lot of curves here, but um, say as I've told you how you can make something curvy like this, uh, well, you can use... Oh, wait a second. Oh, okay. yeah, I forgot to damage this one. So it is 12. Now looks better. Okay, so yeah. So if you have something curvy like this, just use the circle tool and make tangents along the circles that they transition transition into. And it's gonna give you a nice looking curvy feature like that one. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I will be uploading a video every day. And if you like this video, um, you can leave a call. You can leave a comment and ask me any questions if you want, and you can. Subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram as well at Chaskava, where I will be active mostly. You can drop me a DM in there, and uh, if you need any assistance with anything else, uh, you can uh, ask me about that as well. So that's all for today's video, and I'm going to catch you in the next one. See ya.